Welcome to Talk to Brazil with Tom Riach, the business connector to business in Brazil. Welcome to Talk to Brazil, the business connection, a leading Brazil business podcast talking about business in the world. I'm Tom Riach, an American from Pittsburgh, living in Brazil, and known for business networking and talking for my podcast studio in Campinas, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Today's guest is Barry Rabkin, and he's joining us from his office in Pittsburgh. Barry Rabkin is an award-winning B2B technology marketing leader, marketing director at Near Earth Autonomy in Pittsburgh, and also author of the free guide called the Steel City Startup Guide. So with that, Barry, welcome to Talk to Brazil Business Connection. Thanks so much for having me, Tom. Great to be here. That's a great guide, and uh, it was Alex Flozel, a mutual connection that we have that that fit us both together. But I'm really happy to say I've seen the guide. Uh, It's really full of important information. So let's just jump in. What is the Steel City Startup Guide? Yeah, so I I really made it for people like Alex, um, who were coming into Pittsburgh, wanted to participate in our startup ecosystem, um, which is thriving, but also very siloed. And uh, much like I'm I'm sure Sao Paulo, you know, Pittsburgh loves Pittsburgh. We have a lot of enthusiasm for our, our region, but each neighborhood and each uh, each section is almost like its own uh, separate city. We're all, uh, honestly almost like its own separate country, uh, and and they just don't talk. So th- this was an effort for me to say, look, you're coming in, you want to participate, you want to engage, you want to contribute, but you want to uh, tear down those walls and bridge the different educational institutions, the different corporate institutions, the different startup institutions, and and bring them together and participate fully. That, that, that's really what it's about. Well, I know that since I'm here in Brazil and outside of yeah. the States, I can have that feeling. But also yeah. what I see and hear is that many Americans aren't aware uh, of how innovative Pittsburgh is. When you talk about innovation in the States, it's you know Silicon Valley. People are saying, well, I'm going to go to Austin. I'm going to go somewhere else. Uh, but Pittsburgh is centric. When I told Alex, I said, oh, if you want to talk about robotics, you got to go to Pittsburgh. And I think he was a little bit surprised about that. Uh, and other Americans I talk about, you know, obviously think about ketchup when they think about Pittsburgh, but not necessarily about technology. Yeah, well, I used to work at Heinz, so that is uh, near and dear to my heart. And, um, you know, since they're now owned by the uh, 3G Braz- uh, private equity group, um, which also owns uh, Kraft and um uh, Anheuser Busch, you know, there, there's a deep Pittsburgh, Heinz, uh, Brazil connection there. Um, but the, 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 honestly, a uh, thank you for sending us Alex to to Near Earth. We're very lucky to have him. Um, and and B, uh, you know, I think a lot of the work that had been happening in Pittsburgh for many many decades um, on on medicine with the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center mm-hmm. on, on technology uh, with, with CMU AI robotics. It's, it's, it's only recently that it's really, really hit its stride. Um, and things that were kind of happening in very theoretical uh, sort of lab settings are now actually happening uh, in, in very high value ways. You can come to Pittsburgh and there's self-driving cars riding around on our roads um, with passengers. Uh-huh. You know, uh, w- and, and the company I work at, Near Earth Autonomy, we build uh, autonomy systems that will take someone else's vehicle, uh, say, say Boeing, they'll come to us and say, we have a vehicle. Uh, we'd like you to make it fly itself mm. and do it dynamically, do it safely. And uh, we have systems and capabilities that, that enable that. So if you know there, it had a planned course and now there's a crane, construction crane in the way, or there, there's a car in the landing zone, it's going to see that react dynamically and make the smart, safe decision. Oh, Pittsburgh, too, offers bridges and up and down the hills and tunnels and all kinds of interesting attractions for autonomous vehicles, right? Venice is famous for its bridges, but Pittsburgh actually has more. <laughs> I know We're that. the true city of bridges. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that one of the biggest selling points for Pittsburgh recently has been Netflix, has been the, the, the number of films that are being made there, the, the, the industry. That's really true. And... and more and more, I, I find that, obviously, I'm from Pittsburgh, and I like to see that. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. But it, all, it obviously, all of these movies sort of show Pittsburgh in a very great light, which it truly is. A- absolutely. Yeah, it is staggering the number of films that are created here. Now, any, any Pittsburgher will, on one hand, love it, but also be upset by it. Because in one scene, in a car chase scene, they'll be in one part of the city. And then two seconds later, they'll actually be on the exact other side. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll, we'll call out the continuity. But uh, yeah, it, it, it is remarkable. Um, in, in terms of the guide, for anyone uh, in Brazil or really anywhere around the world that's interested in per- participating, um, we are very actively hiring at Near Earth Autonomy. So if, if you want to be part of the next uh, sort of the revolution of autonomous flight, uh, we would love to have you. Um, we, we are primarily looking for people to come in, so you need to to live in Pittsburgh, but we'd love to have you from, from anywhere. And then um, there's also plenty of people hiring uh, for remote positions. So some of the categories on the guide, it, it's startup uh, job opportunities, it's startup news, startup networking, um, which uh, I, I'm sure your listeners would appreciate, and then all kinds of services and support um, and funding opportunities. I see you have um, crowdfunding, nonprofit resources, regional economic development and incubators, uh, so each one of those each one of those uh, uh, titles has a series of links. Right. Yeah. There's there's something like a hundred links on there, um, and I, I update it uh, very regularly. So they should all work. And if, if you catch any that uh, you know anything that's missing that I should have on there, uh, please reach out. You can hit me on LinkedIn at uh, Barry Rapkin, and uh, and also you uh, to to find this guide. If you just search for Steel City Startup Guide or Pittsburgh Startup Guide, it should be the first thing to come up. But what is interesting, it, 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 I was amazed when I first saw it. I, I haven't seen a guide like that for any city. Um, you know, I, I've lived in Pittsburgh since I was five, and I really, I, I, I love Pittsburgh. Um, I, I know how much we have to offer, and uh, I just wanted to sort of tear down those silos and, and bring it all together. And uh, I, I'd had friends and, and family members who are saying, look, you know, I, I know Pittsburgh has all this going on. Can you give me advice? Can, can you help nudge me in the right direction? And after I had enough of those uh, kind of the same conversation over and over, I was just like, look, let's just put together something that's standalone that, um, that, that I can give to people as a resource, not just to my friends, but, but really to anyone that is experiencing the same challenge. Well, a- anyone, anywhere. Well, I'm going to use your guide, obviously, yeah. here in the city of Campinas. Uh, the city sure. of Campinas in Brazil uh, is also very highly developed when we're talking about innovation. Yeah. Uh, many of the, the Brazilian unicorns have started uh, mm-hmm. because of the university, because of the academic uh, concentration that we have, also corporate sure. concentration, research and development that, that happens uh, literally in my backyard here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Campinas is a city of over a million people. The greater area has more than three million, so it's a center uh, of, e- of economic development in Brazil. Uh, it, it also needs something like your guide. And yeah. what I want to do, I'm going to be showing your guide to the person because there are a number of different uh, entities and agencies and companies, but really to put it all together, what needs to happen. Uh, because yeah. again, you can tell everybody how it is, but if they can't find... The, the continuity in getting to the bottom line of what they're interested in, it's just a lot of talk. And, and when I think about what does innovation really mean, to me, it's it's combinations. Right. That, that's all innovation is, is combinations. And if you can bring different people with different experiences and different skill sets together, that's where innovation comes from. And, and, and bringing together, you know, funding from um, from investors and, and, and cutting edge technology from academics and business opportunities, that, that's where success and new ideas and startups thrive. No, and what I like about the guide is exactly innovation is not a goal line. It's not something you right. reach, right? It's, it, it's go- right. ongoing. It's constant. Right. Absolutely. And I, I think people think that it's, you know, you just hit the innovation button. It's, it's like something you do in some super binary sense, but it's, it, it's more of just uh, collisions, right? It, it's getting the right people and the right ideas and the right possibilities together. But also Pittsburgh offers a great lifestyle. It's been considered over time a, a great city to live. So that has that attraction from, uh, let's say, the well-being, right? So uh, Duolingo, uh, the, the, I think the top rated uh, language learning app is based in Pittsburgh. Uh-huh. And they, they had a 
very famous billboard that they got in San Francisco that said basically, come work for Duolingo, uh, own your house. Because, <laughs> you know, for it, it's gotten a little bit more expensive recently, but for a long time, you could buy a perfectly nice house in a perfectly good neighborhood for a hundred grand uh, cash, right. you know, well, well earning uh, good money at, at, at all these companies. So yeah, that the, and it's, it's not just the cost of living. We have great sports teams. We have fantastic museums. We have uh, beautiful parks. I've got a, a Frick Park, which is a 500 and I believe 61 acre park, mm -hmm. you know, a block from my house. Um, and then surrounded by uh, beautiful uh, rural uh, n nature reserves all over. So, I mean, I, I will. I think Pittsburgh can go toe to toe with any other city in the world for our balance of cost of living, culture, um, nature, and and uh, opportunities. I really do. Oh, I agree with you. Was that also yeah. well, one of the things that I miss being here in Brazil are the the four seasons. Yeah, uh, and wherever you are, if you don't have the, if you don't see the transition, uh, yeah, and literally see the transition of one season to the next, of you know summer to fall, fall to winter, winter to spring, it's amazing, uh, and it's something that I miss here because we have a transition, but it's it's not as inspiring uh, as Pittsburgh is. I, I'm picturing in uh, December there, everyone's got Christmas lights wrapped around the palm trees and they're walking around with uh, heavy winter coats because it's only 72 degrees. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see that attraction. You see the point yeah. that, uh, in terms of communication, uh, yeah. in terms of business and not only startups, you have corporations. It's still a corporate center. It's still a financial center. And when people say money makes the world go round, there there is, we're talking about venture capital, uh, it's there. It, it's absolutely true. And it, it's an interesting thing because we, we have all these huge institutions, like you just mentioned, uh, you know, PNC Bank, uh, all kinds of educational institutions like Pitt and, and CMU and, and a number of others. Um, so, so we have things going on in finance and we still have a large manufacturing um, and, and materials uh, presence, you know, companies like Alcoa. Um, but it, it's almost like it's not just tech companies that are tech companies now. Every company is a tech company. Uh, well, right? I agree. Like, every, and every it, company has to be a tech company. Every right? company has to be, right. So uh, yes, we have all these sort of old pillars, but they've done a great job staying relevant staying on the cutting edge and using artificial intelligence and using automation to uh, sort of scale up best practices efficiently and deliver more value uh, at scale right. uh, to, to get ahead and stay ahead. Well, you mentioned CMU, which is Carnegie yeah. Mellon. And I think what you've just said about industry is the same for education, uh, uh, has updated itself, is innovating constantly. Absolutely. Uh, so, so nothing has been left behind. Health, as you mentioned at the beginning, uh, Pittsburgh has been historic. When I first came to Brazil many, many years ago, mm -hmm. uh, one of my first opportunities was to help teach some Brazilian doctors to learn some English. Mm -hmm. And they actually went to Pittsburgh. They were part of one of the first teams that made a liver transplant. And oh, wow. They went and learned it. So I had to help them learn to do a tra I actually learned how to do a transplant. Uh, because I had to teach them in English. They went there, they studied. This is years ago, uh, when it was like the first. Today, a, a, a liver transplant is sort of a commodity anymore. Any transplant has become a commodity. You, know, you have robots mm -hmm. doing it. You don't even need a doctor mm -hmm. anymore. But that was it. You know, that, that was the center. And I said, well, you're going to go to Pittsburgh. They said, well, they said, that's the place. That, that's the place in the world. So th this is good for all your listeners at home to know you need anything from Tom networking, uh, international uh, communication advice, a liver transplant. He's got you. He's got, <laughs> got you. It. Come to no, Tom. No, but now, now we have yeah. the guides. I'm going to send everybody yeah. the same thing. I'm there we go. Gonna, I'm just going to send them to the, the Steel City guys. Go to the guide <laughs> and you'll be able to, yeah. to, to find that. Uh, yeah, and, and for what you were saying, I would n love it. Nothing would make me happier than if this can inspire others, right? I know Pittsburgh, I don't know every city, but if, if the um, brilliant and, uh, and, and hardworking uh, people of Sao Paulo can take some inspiration from this and say, you know, we need this too, and, and, and we know who all the players are, and we're going to build the resource to help tie them all together, mm -hmm. you know, you would be doing such a service um, no, but it's for not your Sao community. Paulo, you say. I want to correct you. I want to say Campinas. 
Campinas, excuse me. Because Campinas. Sao Paulo obviously is a city. Sao Paulo is yeah. a state. Yeah. But what I want to want people to, most people think Campinas is a suburb of the city of Sao Paulo. I see. And it's not. I see. Uh, okay. And it's, so this is what I have to do. It's what we're doing. So you're helping people understand what Pittsburgh is all about and they don't know. Part of what I try to do is help the world understand what Campinas is all about. And, well, my, my request is going to be that the people of Campinas, the people of Sao Paulo, and the people of every city Right. All do this, right? <laughs> this is something that can benefit every community. Yeah, because every city, as you've yeah. seen, and I, I, yeah. what your guide shows, obviously there is a competition among cities. Sure. So everybody sure. wants to attract somebody or something, uh, and that's economic growth, or they want to mm -hmm. keep who they have. Uh, and that's I even, right. Even for Pittsburghers, as you said, many Pittsburghers may not be aware of how much they have on their plate there. It, it's very true, and I think... You know, if you just try to think of it as a zero-sum game of, you know, we want to beat other cities, uh, I, I think it's the wrong mentality because there's really good reasons to live anywhere, mm -hmm. right? There, there, there are people who do not share your view that they love and appreciate having uh, four seasons, right? They would very right. happily have <laughs> every day. Yeah, they want one season, and that one season is a breezy 72 degrees uh, and, and not a cloud in the sky. And, and, and God bless them, right? And if they want to live in uh, Brazil or, um, or Los Angeles or, or all these different places, great. And, and there's also certain regions where if you want to work in an industry, uh, that's where you got to be, right? You, you want to do uh, big national politics in America, you need to live near D.C., Right? You, you have to live near Washington, and that's just the way it is. No, I agree. Well, historically, yeah. Pittsburgh, if you, you talked yeah. about steel, you still call right. it the steel city. Yeah, sure. Steel was manufactured in Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah. Surrounded yeah, by that, steel that, mills. Yeah, uh, it's steel true. Steel has also, today, you, you still have uh, steel mills. You have specialty steel, but the, the blast furnaces belching out smoke, you don't have that anymore. Right. Now, we've really cleaned up. Um, the, the environment and the nature here is beautiful. We... It's interesting because around World War II, America was making about half of the world's steel mm -hmm. was, was coming out of Pittsburgh, which is just uh, amazing when you, when you think of uh, how the, the scale of it. Um, and now, even though we still have the reputation of the steel city, what, what is so cool is it's changed from just making, uh, you know, uh, sort of iron bars and things like that. Now the, the steel that we're putting out is largely robotics. Right. It's, right. it's self-driving right. cars right. taking passengers right. around. It's it's automation lines. It's it's robots. It's drones that that's the, the steel that's coming. And that's just it's so much not just more high tech, um, but truthfully, so much more useful and so much more valuable and so much more impactful. Well, that's true. And again, as, you, yeah. as we've said, you know, innovation doesn't stop. It keeps going. Uh, right. And technology is an ongoing process. And again, I think that transition, uh, maybe Pittsburgh has to change the name to the from the steel city to the innovation city. I don't know. Or maybe the innovation right. city made of steel. Maybe that could be another way of saying it. But uh, it, it is an innovation center. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Pittsburgh is absolutely an innovation center. Um, and I, I think what is so exciting, you and I have, have both been around long enough to sort of remember when things that today may be seen as, as nostalgic, but really were miraculous and cutting edge. You know, that, that the first time you hear that AOL, uh, uh, you have mail, right? Uh, and then the, the first time you, you get a text, right. uh, the first time you download music uh, right. off, off the cloud, all these things that now people just take for granted. You and I were joking before this about how my two-year-old uh, is, is better with voice search than I am. And, you know, they, they, they can't type yet, but they can do a voice search for a video on YouTube right. and, and watch it no problem. So I, I think for, for all the listeners to just remember, uh, however amazing the technology is today, it is just a work in progress. Yeah, I agree and, with you. And, and it is going to get <laughs> disrupted um, by something even more incredible, uh, either by you or, or by a am, competitor. Right? Somebody. But it's coming. That change is coming. It's probably your son. Yeah, it's probably probably my son. The uh, and it the might Google and it Voice might be master. next week. That's the thing. So. I, I know. I, I'm already going to be coming to him for my tech. Uh, no, but tech you, issues. you you've just brought up an interesting point yeah. because uh, when I was young, my one of 
my first attractions was listening to a radio. Sure. That's when we talk about Pittsburgh, you know, radio, TV. Yeah. Uh, you know, commercial communication started there. Mm-hmm. And so today, so well, well you, you, people tell me, well, you're still fixed on radio. Yes, I am. But it's not the radio part, it's the communication part. Right. What we are doing, and people that that are out there somewhere in the world who will listen to this podcast, they will consume it in any different amount of way. I don't know how. It could be on their computer. It could be on a smart device. It could be in their car. They might open up the refrigerator and listen to us. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't really matter. What does matter that we will reach people. Uh, people want to hear about that, not only about Pittsburgh and innovation, uh, but communication it never changes. It changes the way it's communicated. I love uh, that you you brought that up, Tom, and I, I think it's an incredibly powerful insight and important for for all your listeners to focus on that whether or not you are relevant in the future, uh, whether as a, a professional or as a company, is largely based on the category that you put yourself in. If, if you think that you run a buggy whip company, then <laughs> you are going to be out of a job right. when cars come. Right. And if you think that you're in the car business, you're going to be out of a job when autonomous uh, vehicles come. But if you realize that you're in the mobility business, the transportation business, there's always going to be a need for that. That's right. an evergreen need. And what you're describing, if you think you're in the radio business, you might have a hard time. But if you realize I'm in the communication business, mm-hmm. I'm in the connecting and educating and informing business, right. there will always be a need for that. That always. is timeless. And there, there, there will always be a new cutting edge way to satisfy that need. But that need is not going anywhere. That's right. And we need to communicate because people need to learn what I say. Uh, we learn something new every day. Uh, right. With you, hearing you, seeing the guide, I, I've learned so much. And I'm from Pittsburgh, and they, the same thing. So it, it doesn't have to be. So there, there are things out there. There's information, things happening that we don't know about. So if That's it right. weren't for Alex to point that to me. So, and, and Alex is a Chilean who lived in Brazil, is in Pittsburgh, talking mm-hmm. to an American in Brazil, and I'm talking <laughs> to you in Pittsburgh. But that's today's world. It's a beautiful thing. It yeah, really but is. But, and what, how yeah. does it work? Communication, very simple, dynamic communication. When mm-hmm. Alex says, hey, there's a guide that I think you should see. Wow. Mm-hmm. I yeah. thank you. Here we are. We're talking. We're generating a podcast. And hopefully more people will have access, not only to the guide itself, which I think is fantastic, mm-hmm. but to the idea of, of concentrating information, viable, necessary information to help others continue their innovation. Right. And I, I, I completely agree. I think you're right. Uh, and w- when we talk about bringing these communi- communities together, bring these ideas together and these evergreen needs, I think it's really easy, especially if you're in a big company that's doing well to get complacent and say, look, you know, why, why rock the boat? Right. We, we, we've got the market. And it's, it's just so important to realize everything's a work in progress. Change is coming. Right. And you can be on the side of change right. or you can you can try to fight change. Mm-hmm. But change is going to win. Right. <laughs> it it is. is inevitable. It is. It, it, it is not a if, um, but a when. So I really encourage people, you know, even if you don't think of yourself as a startup, you know, it doesn't matter. Everyone has to be innovative. Everyone has to be thinking w- what would put uh, our company out of business? What would make us obsolete and go do it before your competitor does? Well, you're right, I agree with you, but uh, what I've uh, convinced myself uh, that every day I, I put my feet out of bed, I'm starting up. And, That's right. Uh, and every day's a startup. I love it. And as soon as I connect anything or anything's connected to me, yeah. Uh, and here I say in Brazil, Brazil, even there in Pittsburgh, when we wake up, when we start up our day, three quarters of the world has already started up. Mm hmm. Three quarters of the world is half of the world's done for the day. Uh, so really, starting up is, is like innovation. It's an ongoing process. Mm-hmm. It's not a goal line. So right. people say, "When when do I finish my startup?" You don't finish your startup. I don't think a startup ever finishes. I mean, only when um, they've sold their last product <laughs> and and served their last customer. And and it's it. That, I mean, that's how I think of marketing. Right. I've right. been leading. Uh, different companies marketing for years and 
you, you can always do more of it. You can always do less of it. There, there's no sort of minimum or maximum, but it, it never ends because the market is always changing and the customer's needs are changing and the technology is changing. So you, you got you to gotta keep up with that. And there are two-year-olds out there. And there's two-year-olds out there uh, who, who need their um, Google Voice videos. And it, I think it's, uh, it's both exhausting in one sense because it, it never ends, but it's also incredibly energizing and inspiring too. I mean, because that, that burning question of what's next is always there. And I think as long as you can kind of uh, pace yourself, right, realize it's a marathon, not a sprint. And even most, most startups take it five to 10 years uh, to, to have a sort of meaningful exit. So you can't just kind of sleep under your desk and, and live off Red Bull and, and ramen <laughs> indefinitely. Like it, you, you have to kind of stay energized and, right. and look for the long term. But but that said, I mean, that, that constant question of what's next uh, really does keep me going. And I, I'm curious for, for you, Tom, let, let's say, uh, you know, we're, we're going to maybe check in again in 2040. We'll, we'll, we'll see how things are going. What, what, what changes are you most excited about uh, coming down the line? Every day's a new day. Love it. Uh, uh, no, seriously, I, I'm just yeah. amazed. Every, and certainly every day that I, well, a, a simple thing, you mentioned uh, large corporations. Yeah. One of the things that I see is a drive within corporate networking, corporate networking internally. Yeah. There's a little focus. Many people work in large corporations. They don't know each other. Yeah. So somebody and how do we take those walls down? They, yeah, somebody doesn't know, you know, a counterpart that may be in Estonia or maybe in South Africa or wherever, uh, mm -hmm. India. Uh, so, so one of the things, one of my advantages, and I, I take that as a blessing of podcasting, uh, I speak to people all over the world uh, weekly. I don't say daily, but I do generate, and I, I speak to people everywhere. And, and each person today, I'm talking to you mm -hmm. from Pittsburgh and learning mm -hmm. something about Pittsburgh. Monday I'll be talking to some, tomorrow I'll be uh, uh, interviewing another person. So it's, and they'll tell me something new. They'll tell me something that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And they'll help me. So uh, the only thing that I, I drive for myself is the fact that I have to be open to receive that. Right. We, we just can't right. close our box. I, we, I don't think we can say, well, I've had enough of that, right? The productivity, mm -hmm. the part that you said, being energized. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, I wish I were two years old. <laughs> All right, uh, because every little thing you can see in your 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 kids' eyes, uh, what happens? It's all new. All yeah. Right? Uh, no, and it's exciting. But I think to us, uh, to to be living in a time when people are talking about going to Mars, uh, right? Is something that you know, for some people say, well, that's crazy. I don't really think that's crazy, but it's going to happen. Yeah, if happen. I was going to have one tagline for, for your listeners, uh, I mean, other than, you know, you, use these lessons, these are global, these apply everywhere. But, but as I'm trying to genuinely with love and sincerity pitch Pittsburgh as a, as a real center of innovation, it, it's just come to Pittsburgh, live in the future because right. it's, it's what you said. I mean, right. the, all this stuff from the Jetsons and sci-fi, it's here, it's, it's happening it. it's now. It's, <laughs> it's real. And, uh, I mean, we're kind of getting a sneak peek to it uh, of things that aren't going to roll out globally uh, for, for years, but eventually will just be the norm. You know, you're, you're going to look up in the sky in, in five years or 10 years, and you're going to see uh, drones delivering packages to, yeah. to, to and uh, hopefully with technology that near Earth Autonomy helped develop, you're going to see cars uh, driving on the roads without... Um, you know, a human driver and uh, hopefully from maybe a, a local Pittsburgh company like Argo or Aurora. And th these are going to have transformative positive impacts on, uh, on people's lives. And, uh, you know, for, for the work you do and the passion you have for networking, I think some people might hear networking and think, oh, that's like, uh, it's like a nice thing to do. You're supposed to do it. It's, it's, it's <laughs> nice like a, a pleasantry. It's a nice to have. Yeah. But the truth is, connecting people is the most powerful thing you can give them. Right. And, and you're doing a huge service on both sides, right? You, you have uh, an invest, an investment group and you have startups. They need each other. 
right. you have um, a, a company or a startup and you have service providers, they need each other and you are helping both out. You know, both are massively benefiting from that two minute introduction that you took the time to make right. for them. And most people, I think that's worldwide, many people don't know their next door neighbor. Right. So if you don't know your next door neighbor, you don't know the company that's down the block. Uh, right. You don't know what's happening at Carnegie Mellon. We don't know what's happening at, at Autonomy. We, we don't know that. It could be right there. It could be driving in front of our home. And we don't know it's, that. So It's, but it's it, true. It's, it, you know, it's opening, true. opening one's eyes uh, needs energy. But uh, the only thing I want to say, I don't want to wait to 2040 to interview you again. Uh, so we're unfortunately coming to the end of our time, but I, I will be back uh, to interview Great. you again, maybe next time with your son. All right. Okay. Yeah. He can show me how to use uh, <laughs> the voice search. Yeah. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, awesome. Barry, I want to thank you again. Time. I want to congratulate you uh, for the guide thank and you. again, for our listeners, it's the steel city startup guide with mm -hmm. more than a hundred different links to fantastic information from, crypto job listening job global global joke general <laughs> job listings right yeah uh, accelerators what have you but all of the pittsburgh startups and job opportunities right uh, you, you got it and uh and if you do want to learn more about near earth autonomy you can go to near earth arrow that's a-e-r-o uh check it out and if, if you want to reach out to me personally um uh, I'm just Barry Rapkin, B-A-R-R-Y-R-A-B-K-N on, uh, on LinkedIn. And uh, Tom, thanks so much for having me and, and thanks to your audience. Uh, thank you. And again, for our audience and uh, thanking them too for their time listening to us. And as Barry said, it's B-A-R-R-Y-R-A-B-K-I-N on LinkedIn and the Steel City Startup Guide to learn and find out constantly everything about innovation in Pittsburgh to thank our audience and our sponsor, Focus MI Market Intelligence. Focus MI specializes in market research for the Brazilian agricultural market. More about them on their site, which is focusmi.com. Find our previous shows of Talk to Brazil podcast on all major platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, YouTube, and many others. Remember, when you talk to Tom, you talk to Brazil and the world. Goodbye, and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Tom Riach on Talk to Brazil, the business connector to Brazil.